Hey everyone, so I'd just like to start this video by kind of saying a huge thank you to everyone for the like incredible response on yesterday's video and um, I don't want to kind of like gush or anything but like seriously some of you guys are so amazingly lovely and supportive and I just like I can't get over it I've never had anything like this before and it's it's really really nice and it's so sweet and I, I can't thank you enough and I wish I could kind of like go through and like every comment and read every comment and comment back to every comment um but there's quite a lot so I'm kind of struggling and um, I worry that if I just do the kind of like oh my god thank you so much reply on every single comment it's just gonna sound kind of false and awkward and I don't know so I just want to take this opportunity to say a huge thank you to all of you um and just mm, thank you <laughs> um but anyway on to today's video as so many of you liked the video I did earlier in the week where I talked about psychics, I thought I'd come back to the topic. And today I want to talk about a few of the techniques that psychics, mediums, clairvoyants, whatever you want to call them, the techniques they use to make you think that they actually have powers. The two kind of main areas of this are hot reading and cold reading. I was going to put them in the same video but there's quite a lot to talk about so I am going to split it up and tomorrow's video will be on hot reading. Today we're going to talk about cold reading techniques. So cold reading is a technique that psychics use when they're giving like a reading to a client or apparently communicating with spirits or something like that. And they tend to use cold reading techniques on clients that they've never met before, complete strangers. They, they do also use it often on repeat customers and people that they might know, but usually it's a complete stranger. And it's really, really common when you see a psychic reading for like a whole room of people, usually they're just using cold reading techniques to kind of get some hits. So I found a really nice summary on Wikipedia of all places that says, cold reading can quickly obtain a great deal of information by analyzing the person's body language, age, clothing or fashion, hairstyle, gender, sexual orientation, religion, race or ethnicity, uh, level of education, manner of speech, place of origin, etc. Psychics who use cold reading techniques employ high probability guesses, quickly picking up on signals as to whether their guesses are in the right direction or not, then emphasising and reinforcing chance connections and quickly moving on from missed guesses. So that's just a really brief overview of kind of what cold reading is. Basically, it's about making kind of quite vague guesses, quite vague statements, and then picking up on signals from the person or people you're reading to know which ones to jump on, which ones to quickly move on from. And it does make people think that you kind of know more than you do. So on to some of the specific techniques. One of the big ones that you might see psychics using is called shotgunning. And this is when they give a lot of information, often to a large audience, and kind of hope some of it sticks. So. Somebody lost a spouse newly and someone also lost um, a sister and someone is also wearing the mother or grandmother's religious articles, whether if it's um, like a, a miraculous medal, a cross, rosary beads, or they brought them with them. Then they observe the responses and start to narrow in on certain bits of information. For example, to a whole group of people, you might say something like, okay, so um, I'm getting the sense of someone called, called David or Dave, and you know, pretty much everyone knows someone called David. Both mine and Dan's dads are called David. It's a common name. So chances are, at least if you're talking to a big audience, someone is gonna know a David or a person is gonna know a David somewhere in their life, whether it's a family member, a friend, a colleague. Go right there. Our brother passed away um, and he died suddenly. We didn't well, get to say- Don't say anything about him, but okay. is your question about your brother? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is his mom also passed? Yep. And she passed before him? Yep. I feel like she was there to greet him. Was there some type of, um, like, was he missing or somebody missing? Or was there, like, somebody in the family that was, like, out of the family for a while? Um, Removed? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And where are the five kids in the family? Um, yeah, there's, there's more than five. Tell me. Six. So out of the psychic math now, we know we do five mm -hmm. minus one, right? Five are similar, one's different. Okay. So how can um, I have five being similar, one being different? Um, not sure. Um, is it that five are living and one's past? Or? No. Six are living and three yeah, past. Yeah, there's six girls and... So how many total? 
Sorry, there's no, eight nine. altogether in the siblings. Is, nine. Is that nine. One? nine, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Nine. <laughs> Thank you. So there's six, all sisters. six okay. girls and three boys have passed. Males. So I need to do in my way, it's got to be five and four, where mm. five have something in common and four are different. So are five close in age, four further apart, or <laughs> how many total passed? Three. No. I don't, know how to, I don't know how to split it, but I know it's got to be five and four. Um, other times they might talk about something like, oh, so I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting a feeling here, here in my chest. Um, someone, someone, there's a blackness, someone's coming through and they're showing me their chest. And that, that could kind of hit on any number of things. It could be someone who died from a heart condition. It could be someone who died from lung cancer. It could even be someone who just suffered from bad indigestion in life. And it's all about making these vague statements. And also, they tend to give quite a lot of them off in one go. So they'd be like, okay, I'm sensing, I'm sensing a D, a name with a D. A D, D David, Dave, Davey, uh, da no, da Dan, Daniel, does anyone, does anyone, uh, does anyone know a Daniel? And it's just, a, there's a lot of information going on. Um, and because they're kind of throwing it out so quickly and so much in one go, that the clients don't always notice how much information is being thrown at them. They tend to forget the misses and just focus on the hits. And psychics tend to practice this really well so that they, they can quickly pick up on what's hitting and just move in, narrow in on that, so it makes it seem like that was the focus. Another cold reading technique that's quite common is sometimes referred to as the Barnum effect, and this makes use of Barnum statements. You might also have heard of it as the Forer effect. So this relies very, very heavily on the client's kind of eagerness and willingness to fill in details and make connections with what's said, even when you're saying something quite vague. So this does essentially rely on the client or the audience's faith or belief in what you're doing and their willingness to say oh my god that's right yes so again this could be jumping from a i get a feeling here to oh my god my dad died of lung cancer do you know what i mean so this can involve saying barnum statements which are actually very vague very loose very open-ended but they sound very specific there are linguistic tricks which uh, unless you're aware of them are very easy to fool for and those tricks can give the impression that the person knows everything about your character or might um, refer to facts and things from your life or from your past that they seemingly couldn't know about. And Barnum statements are things which essentially apply to anybody. This is only part of the cold reading skill, but it's, it's a major part of it. It so, comes from P.T. Barnum, the P. circus P. proprietor, That's who right. said, we have something for everybody. So the, these are statements along the lines of... Um, you're somebody who uh, you tend to keep people a little bit at bay, but when... Well, when you're a caring person. You, yeah, you're a caring, you, have, yeah, you, you yeah. keep people a little, bit, a little bit at bay there, you tend to keep people at arm's length, but when, they, when you allow people into that inner sanctum of, you know, when they become your close friends, mm. if they betray you, then that, you know, that, that, that really hurts. You know? And you're not saying anything other than you're closer to people that you're close to, then it doesn't, means nothing, yeah. absolutely nothing. Yes. Yeah. So there was a really interesting experiment done around these by Bertram Fora in 1948. He basically gave a personality test out to a whole load of students. He got them to fill it in and then went away, spent some time and said he was analysing the tests. Based on this, he gave each of the students a, you know, kind of analysis of their personality, a statement about themselves. And then they went away and rated how accurate that statement was. On a scale of zero to five, with five being the most accurate, people on average rated this statement around a 4.26 is very very high. The catch? Well every statement was the same. He hadn't done any analysis on their tests, he'd just given them all the same statement. And this included what we now call Barnum statements. Um, so these are the ones that sound very specific but are very vague and can apply to a lot of people. Horoscopes make really really good use of this. So in Fora's example he used statements like, you have a need for other people to like and admire you, Yet you tend to be critical of yourself. And that applies to me, but that also applies to Dan, that applies to my sister, that applies to pretty much everyone I know. But when you're hearing it in the context of yourself, you can, you can listen to it and be like, that is me, yeah, you're right, you know these things about me. It's easy to see why people kind of fall for them. Another example that Fora used in his experiment uh, was a statement, 
at times you have serious doubts as to whether you've made the right decision or done the right thing. You prefer a certain amount of change and variety and, come, and become dissatisfied when hemmed in by restrictions and limitations. Like, who doesn't? That describes such a huge number of people. It's like every kind of average person in society will be able to relate to that. And that's, that's the kind of thing about Barnum's statements, is that they seem very specific to you because people are willing to make these jumps and make these connections with themselves. It's kind of partly to do with people's faith in psychics, partly to do with the fact that humans, biologically, naturally, we are quite self-centred. And that's not always a bad thing, but it is true and it is one of the things that influences how effective these Barnum statements are. More recently, this experiment has been repeated on TV, actually, by the likes of Chris Angel and my hero, Darren Brown. I love him. And it was, you know, pretty much exactly the same. And, even more recently, it was repeated by BuzzFeed. Although I'm not sure how much that adds to its credibility. But there you go. Another really common cold reading technique is fishing. And Teresa Caputo is one of the people who is no notorious for this. And again, this is very common among the kind of psychics who address a large audience. So fishing starts by making some kind of educated guess. Maybe if you're talking to one person directly, you'll notice a visual cue about them, something. Maybe, maybe they're stroking a ring, maybe they're stroking a watch, maybe they're holding a necklace, or maybe you can see what age they are, what class they are, and try and maybe figure out some idea of where they are in their lives. Are they young enough to be at university? Are they nearing graduation, maybe? Are they at the age where they're maybe looking to buy a house? Are they at an age where they're nearing retirement? And you look at these visual clues, and you pick up on that, and you work with it. And then they throw out a kind of general question. And, you know, it might be like, what is it about a watch? What am I, what am I getting about a watch? Or it might be, Am I sensing that you're thinking about, about relationships right now, about something about marriage, maybe? So with a general question like that, they throw it out there, then they wait for an answer, and then pretend they knew it all along. So if a woman says, marriage, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm actually going through a divorce, she'd be like, yep, I knew it, I knew it, I, I saw this dark cloud, divorce, okay. What the spirits are telling me is, and it's literally, you throw out a very vague question, wait for an answer, and then jump on it, and pretend you knew all along. And that's what fishing is. Who lost the spouse? Here. Okay. Here. I think I'm right. I'm right here. You, is your wife departed? Yes. yes. Your wife has departed? Yes. Okay, because she just, she sat next to you and she said, just sit down, just sit down. Would that be her personality to tell you just, you know, well, maybe don't, don't speak up yet quite so much. Is that her wedding ring? Uh, no, it's my mother's wedding ring. Oh, it's your mom. Oh, because I heard some, She's the wedding ring. Too. And your, that's your mom's wedding ring? Yes, it is. This is my, my wife's wedding uh, ring here. Oh, you have the wedding ring. So they are just some of the basic techniques used in cold reading. Basically, it's all about picking up on the cues in front of you, being very good at reading body language, reading expressions, even listening to the tone in someone's voice, picking up on clues in front of you and responding, even when you have no idea beforehand. It also helps to have a good idea about things like what names are popular for certain age groups, if you're performing to like a certain area or a certain group of people, you might want to get an idea of what their economic status is, what jobs they're likely to have, that kind of thing. And I believe that, you know some of the psychics who genuinely believe they have psychic powers, who genuinely believe they can pick up on these things? This, this is just my interpretation, I might be wrong, but I think that those people who genuinely, genuinely believe in their psychic powers, they're really just really intuitive people. They're really good at reading people, they're really good at picking up on clues, and for some reason they interpret it themselves as them having psychic powers. Anyway, that, that's just what I think about those kinds of psychics. Other psychics who are just con men and just out to trick people. Those people will spend time learning cold reading techniques, learning what works best, learning what kind of questions get the best response from not necessarily the most number of people, but a believable number of people. That is basically the, the core of being a psychic. It's all just about reading people and responding. It's as simple as that. Anyway, in tomorrow's video, I'm gonna be talking a little bit more about hot reading techniques. So this is mostly where you sneak away beforehand and you get a little bit of information on people. So uh, that's, that's a little bit sneakier. 
There was a psychic who was featured on the Darren Brown program who did that. I think the psychic twins are notorious for that. And Sally Morgan as well has also been caught out doing that. So we're going to talk a little bit about them tomorrow. But for now, let me know what you thought of this video down in the comments. A huge thank you again to all my amazingly lovely, wonderful, supportive subscribers and viewers and commenters and just lovely, lovely people who just, I, yeah, you're amazing. Thank you. Um, but yeah, for now, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you again soon. Oh, I also just want to introduce Patch. He fell over, but he's a cutie. He is, as me and Dan have named them, my good boy of the day. I don't know if you've noticed, I tend to have a little stuffed animal in the background of my videos now. And um, today we have Patch, and he has gorgeous little coloured ears because he's a cutie. And he's such a cute little boy, aren't you? He is. Yes, you are. So this is my good boy of the day.